Hello, my name's Morag Gamble from the Permaculture Education Institute and welcome to Masterclass number 14. Tonight's topic is all about becoming a permaculture teacher and ways to actually do that so that you can create a real and sustainable livelihood so that permaculture uh, can become more than just a way of life and that it can actually be your livelihood too. So we're going to dive on into this. Um, the this series of, of masterclasses is sponsored by the Permaculture Education Institute. We have a permaculture educators program which combines together the permaculture design certificate course and a brand new permaculture teacher certificate. So it's an international course that is flexible and really in-depth material. So I can tell you more about that later, but let's dive in. Why teach permaculture? I fell in love with teaching permaculture because it enabled me to, to do ethical work, work that meant that I could be creating things which were caring for the earth, caring for people, and that were fair share too. So these are the permaculture ethics. So for me, it was such an amazing opportunity to be able to make a difference, help to create positive practical strategies in local communities, work from home, supporting my family, um, engaging my family in the process, working with my communities and engaging with my community and create a really amazing work-life balance. But also it's incredibly fun and it's incredibly flexible too because if you can design your own permaculture work around what it is that you and your family and your friends and your community are doing, it gives you a great sense of, of freedom and purpose. So I highly recommend permaculture teaching. Um, I've been teaching permaculture for over 25 years now. I think in, in my entire working life, I've had a, a so-called you know paid job employed somewhere else for I think nine months. So everything else that I've ever done has been around doing permaculture teaching in one form or other and um, I highly I highly recommend it so a lot of people ask me well, can, you know can you actually really make permaculture teaching your real job and my answer is absolutely yes absolutely yes so in this master class what I wanted to explore this is sort of the summary of what we're going to have a look at what are some of the ways that you can create your own teaching work your own permaculture teaching work. What are some of the ways that you can become a permaculture teacher? How can you find a mentor to help you develop your process? And how? what are some of the ways too that you can build your teaching experience? Now, I want to say here that um, this is a huge, huge topic. And in a, in a short masterclass, of course, I'm not going, to, not going to be able to cover absolutely everything. But what I want to try to do is to give you um, as, as a really broad overview and give you many different examples. So hopefully there's something that's really valuable that you can take away from this. But um, I just want to say it's, I'm not going to be answering absolutely every possible question that could be out there about permaculture work. Maybe that's something you can get in touch with me later about. So let's start with looking at ways to create your own permaculture teaching job. So actually creating your own livelihood. I suggest you map some of the possibilities that you see for yourself in permaculture teaching. I've outlined a whole array of different possibilities here and we're going to dive into a few different more examples after, um, from this slide. But what I wanted to do here was just to show you that if you just stop to think for a moment, all of a sudden you can fill up a page with all the different possibilities of how and where you can actually be a permaculture teacher. So one of the most common ways that people understand permaculture teaching is the permaculture design course, otherwise known as the PDC, which has typically been run as an intensive residential course. Also now quite often offered on weekends or one day a week and, and like we offer here in as an online program. Um, but you can also do permaculture teaching in so many different ways as well. Um, short workshops that you can offer in your home garden even um, or in local community garden. Perhaps there's even places at, at your work where you could do snippets of a, a perm bigger permaculture course that are really related skills to what it is that people in your environment need or, or want. You could run a permaculture club, you know, weekly sessions for kids or weekly sessions for your neighbours, move around to different people's places. 
um, you could develop up a permaculture mentoring program where often it actually is a design consultant, a permaculture design consultant, you're mentoring and coaching people through developing up their property. But you could also be a mentor um, as you develop your skills um, in supervising diploma, diploma projects, for example. And there are so many different elements of permaculture. The per permaculture design course is really just an introduction to so many, many different topics. Uh, so you can take each one of those particular topics like permaculture water, or permaculture design, permaculture teaching, teaching internationally, um, you know, all the different elements, setting up community gardens, all of those different elements could actually be um, taken and expanded and become advanced permaculture design workshops. So whatever it is that you have a passion or an interest or a skill in, you can actually create permaculture teaching programs around that. And that's something different that you can offer because your set of skills and knowledge and experience is unique to you. And so that's a really wonderful opportunity for you to see how you can find your own particular place within the ecology of permaculture teachers that currently exist. So. Again, other venues that you could think of are universities, whether it be in the garden or lecturing into courses or supervising projects of students that are within university out in your permaculture project. Um, one of the things I like to do is involve schools, um, link up with community centers. They always have programs of events. Libraries do also. Um, so many different festivals uh, have possibilities for workshops and, and creating um, very interactive kind of permaculture education um, areas. And also, of course, online, there's lots of possibilities for creating permaculture education through that. And I'm really excited too about taking permaculture and layering it into a whole range of different professional development modules. And it doesn't really matter what profession you're in, I'm sure you can find a way to apply the principles and ethics of permaculture to that particular profession and then uh, develop that and um, deliver that to that particular group of people. So again, it's really about thinking through where your skills and your interests are and finding, finding your niche. So what are the possibilities? Map them um, and, and keep adding to it. But what's a really good place to start? If you're just beginning out as a permaculture teacher and you're thinking, what can I, how can I get into this? I don't have the confidence yet to, to launch into teaching a permaculture design certificate course. Um, so where would you start? Well, one of the, one of the first places I ever started when I was helping to create the community garden down in, in Brisbane was to start doing garden tours. And it's something that I've often suggested to people who are just starting out and they've found it a really valuable way. So you're in the garden and you're teaching about permaculture through the examples that are right there in front of you. And so because you've been involved in creating those gardens and, you know, most poss possibly um, helping to design them, you have an in-depth knowledge about them. So you find as you start to walk around with a group of people, the knowledge just starts to flow out of you and you start to, to see what it is that you speak really comfortably about. And so you can start to focus on that and develop up your skills in areas perhaps that you're not so confident in um, and start to read read the groups that come through with you and and you know you see their faces what you know what is it about how you're presenting that you think they think oh that's really great or you sort of they sort of start to vague out and you realize hmm okay i'm moving <laughs> in the wrong direction now so all the time forever even right from the beginning be a reflective practitioner meaning exactly what i just said then Always be aware of what you are doing and how you can improve and take on all the feedback that you get and keep trying to improve. So once you start to find it where it is that you feel that you really shine, start to offer some practical workshops in that. And if you feel confident enough, you know, I really highly suggest that you start even developing up a whole introduction to permaculture weekend because something like that is a really valuable set of skills that you can offer as a as a whole to a, a range of people that then can take that out and ripple that further into their neighborhoods and communities even from short practical workshops and introduction weekends 
the lessons can ripple out far and wide. And I've seen this in so many different places. Um, you know, being a permaculture teacher doesn't necessarily mean having to be, like I said, you know, a teacher of the, the big permaculture design certificate courses. It can be starting with a whole range of short workshops. And actually what I'm finding is that um, within communities, particularly in urban areas, people are really busier and short of time. So actually just having short workshops, a series of them that could be offered throughout the year on a range of different topics is a really useful and valuable way that people can access that information without it being too much of a time commitment, which I think is a really, really great place to start. So also, if you're um, looking for um, ex more experience, I think, just keep doing it and trying it and taking opportunities to be a leader in different ways. So even organising, a, you know, a little perma a perma blitz day or a perma uh, what I was trying to say was a, a kind of like a, a workshop day in your own garden or down at the community and you take on the leadership role and help to guide people so what I find this does it gives you the skills and the experience to be able to plan a session get the resources that you need explain things clearly so that people know what needs to be done um, include people engage people um, organize logistics like the teas and all of that sort of thing and it gives you an enormous experience in, in, in order to actually get um, to become a really good teacher so sometimes doing things that aren't actually part of generating income are an enormous benefit for generating a community for generating uh, your skills and so looking at things beyond also the the dollar value I think some of my most valuable um, lessons and my most valuable teaching have been some of the things that I've done well probably most of the things that I've done for free um, and so I you know never underestimate the power and the value of those sorts of things as a permaculture teacher, working with schools is a really fabulous potential for creating a whole range of different programs. So one opportunity is to actually go into schools. There are so many different gardens now that are operating in schools and a number of different schools have programs, have actually positions for school gardeners. So there is a, there is a potential, but I really think that some of the bigger possibilities are creating programs in your own projects. So whether it be at a community garden or um, for me, it's here at the eco village, maybe it's at a farm, um, at a community market, a whole range of different places. So one of the things that I do is actually set up a series of links to the curriculum. So what you need to do is to find someone, you know, who has some of the, some knowledge about, um, the local curriculum in your area and it could be at a kindergarten it could be at a primary school it could be in a high school or even within the university context too because there are every single faculty really could benefit from having some kind of application of education around the permaculture principles and ethics and there's so many different ways to do that so we offer school tours we often get groups from everywhere from quite often in high school groups uh, the, the teachers are looking for really practical ways ways to get the kids out of the classroom and learn in context um, the group here they're they're from a geography class looking at um, food systems in the world um, we also work in in various other countries too we've just come back from uganda and kenya and working with school programs there there is there is so much need in places like that to create really vibrant gardens that can help to feed students in those schools but also to help them learn in in context because there's not many resources there and not many books if you have a fabulous learning environment like a permaculture garden there is so much to learn so schools focusing permaculture education in that school context but not necessarily in the school campus itself is a really really valuable and viable way to be a really effective permaculture teacher now the permaculture design course otherwise known as the pdc is kind of the international standard. Uh, it was started by Bill Mollison and was originally set out to be a 72 hour intensive course. And 
the thing is that you can see these courses run in so many different forms. Typically, it started out as a two-week in residential intensive, or maybe it was actually longer to start with, but the, the most common form is a two-week course where you work through um, the, the, um, the theory and the practice and the design applications of permaculture. But you don't have to do it all in one go. You can actually spread it out over... a a really long period of time if you wanted to you could do it as a series of of weekends you can even offer an evening class or maybe sort of just a couple of hours each weekend and over a period of time you build up the curriculum but you could also create a really fabulous team you as a permaculture teacher may not be ready to take on teaching the whole entire course in one go but you might be able to find a team where and i know in the south of, of um, australia there is a team which gets together it's called the permaculture teachers guild and they work out what the curriculum is uh, for their particular region they work out um, who who's really passionate about different topics and create a really amazing teaching guild so finding your place in an ecology of teachers i think is a really really valuable thing to do and find out who else is doing this in your area so permaculture courses too can be offered in different places uh, this is one of the programs that we we were involved in running over in south korea and so quite often you might start in helping to teach a course then then become maybe more of a teaching mentor and and the idea is as quickly as possible to not actually to get yourself out of a job in that way because you don't want to be constantly going back at really the most valuable teachers are the local teachers and so cultivating that knowledge as quickly as possible Another way of running a permaculture design is is doing design charrettes. And by this I mean um, with a group of people in a particular place. This is a community garden that was being developed in Turkey and uh, in Izmir in Turkey. So very, as you can see, very degraded, blank, absolutely blank site. So as a teacher, rather than teaching about design, you teach in the landscape actually designing itself so offering lots of different examples working in teams helping those teams to discuss and refine and and design their particular place and go from from nothing to a a garden on the ground within a period of a few weeks and so this really practical application with a whole group of people is a really powerful way that a group can then continue on so they're building relationships they're building their design they're building and sharing their knowledge together and then as you step out of that process um, that group can continue on and start to teach each other and teach other communities how to get that going so as a teacher running design charrettes is a is a really exciting and interesting way to be able to um, implement permaculture But as a permaculture teacher, I really highly recommend that you attend as many different workshops by other people that you possibly can. Listen to what they say, listen to how they teach, work out what it is that you can learn from that particular um, experience uh, and always be open to learning new things. And particularly too, I highly recommend visiting as many different people's gardens and learning their different ways of using plants, of um, creating guilds, of setting up um, building systems or sustainable energy systems, um, different ways that they interact with their community or make a living out of their garden. So as a teacher, you can then, once you've experienced that and, and developed up a sense of understanding of different ways of doing it, you're able then to tell the stories about those different ways. So it's a fantastic way to to learn and to teach. And maybe while you're there, you're doing some kind of exchange as well. If you have the opportunity, I want to encourage you to try teaching through a translator. Now, one of the things that this does for you is it helps you to become much more clearer in the way that you speak, the way that you explain things, getting to the point really um, really quickly because a translator will get lost if you start to ramble on so 
Get to the point, say what you need to say, demonstrate as much as you possibly can, use as many pictures to explain what it is that you're trying to say, diagrams, um, you know, if you're wanting to create, uh, d explain water systems, then, you know, get down into the sand. If you're wanting to explain garden systems, get your hands in the earth. It's a really very practical way to teach and it's a very exciting way because you need to, you, you put on your, uh, you know, it challenges you to really actually be as succinct as you possibly can and get to the point. Um, so another way that I really like to develop up teaching experience is to work internationally but I don't recommend that you just dive on in and, and head off into a place and say hi I'm going to come and teach you permaculture. I highly recommend that you travel with someone who's done this work a lot who has the cultural skills to be able to work in different contexts and different places and that who is intricately linked with local people and local communities and so there's an invitation to come to that place and that is really really important so if you have the opportunity to work internationally to buddy up with people to experience different places different cultures different ways of of um, planting and different ways of using the plants different ways of um, actually creating a household design systems I think it's a really very valuable way for you to become an excellent permaculture teacher because again it gives you not only an opportunity to to be a student teacher but it gives you an opportunity to gain lots of different experience and ideas and knowledge that you can come back and share with other people now in order to actually get some more work happening locally for yourself you may need to go out and kind of in a way pitch what permaculture teaching is all about and what permaculture education can offer so you need to explain the benefits of a permaculture education program maybe set out a bit of the process of how it might work in that particular context um, in this in this example here I'm explaining to uh, a whole series of different heads of departments at the University of Sunshine Coast and also this guy in the suit in the back he's the the vice chancellor the kind of like the boss of the of the university looking at creating a new community garden and integrating the learning into a lot of different um, faculties there so there's the engineering there's nutrition there's um, sustainability a whole lot of different groups all there looking at how to implement a permaculture garden and permaculture education program through the university campus and weaving it back as a practical project-based learning that students can do from all different faculties. So sometimes it actually creating new education programs requires you to go out and do a little bit of legwork I suppose and if there's something that you think that you would like to do or you could do to actually make a meeting with somebody and go and have a chat and if you need to go and do a presentation or um, maybe too uh, quite often I've invited people to come out um, to our place so that they can see what it is we do and they can understand a bit more you know for example just heading back to the working with schools one of the possibilities you could do is actually to invite a group of teachers run a teacher's um, induction program or a, a teacher's uh, in-service program to explain to them the possibilities and so I think there, the all these different parts of uh, being a permaculture teacher are important um, to think really broadly it's not just about putting on a class and and um, advertising that and getting people to come to actually ripple permaculture out into so many different environments and organizations and industries and communities uh, to to find out really how it is best that you can connect and and collaborate in that environment so rather than I guess what I'm trying to say is rather than just going okay so here's permaculture as a permaculture course or a permaculture workshop it's saying okay permaculture is an approach how can we weave it into this particular environment and design a really exciting program that fits with that group and that's where I get really excited about the potential because it's never ending there is no shortage of work in permaculture education if you take that particular approach of of really creating it and and linking with whoever and wherever you are 
And so that might also mean writing and collaborating and presenting. So um, I've just contributed a chapter of this book that um, Dr. Nick Rose here is holding up, Reclaiming the Urban Commons. So uh, writing about the the way that North East Street City Farm was developed as a collaborative design pro, um, process. Um, there's on, on the left is a guy who teaches through his CSA and set up a national organisation around um, community supported agriculture. Um, Deb, next to me, um, she runs programs for refugees in, in Victoria. And so um, David Holmgren, uh, co-originator of permaculture, one of the things he first did when when permaculture was starting was to go away and create a really sound example of how to live a permaculture life and how to design a permaculture property and from that then start to teach more and, and so i think having the places that you can invite people to going out and presenting about those collaborating with other people writing about that is all part of being a permaculture teacher too and they build um, awareness, I guess, and connection about the potential for permaculture. So how do you become a permaculture teacher? There's lots of different permaculture teaching pathways. The most common and internationally accepted starting point is completing a permaculture design certificate. These have been uh, developed up to offer a broad spectrum of what permaculture is all about but it cannot of course cover absolutely everything that you need to know about permaculture it's sort of an entry point to a lot of different things so the permaculture design certificate what it does is it it enables people to share the ethics the principles the practices the strategies the the local strategies um, the broad overview of what permaculture is all about and then from that foundation you can de develop up a whole range of different expertise so i highly advise people firstly to start with doing the permaculture design certificate and then go away and practice start developing up your own place helping other people develop up their own place help to create community gardens get involved in local projects join a local cooperative whatever it is that you feel that you're really passionate about in your local area related to permaculture and get in there and do it and learn from that and then start to start to teach just start small um, maybe support another teacher uh, buddy up with people get a team together and start doing it but you may also want to develop up your teaching skills a bit more some people who are teachers or who've done a lot of facilitation before just naturally move into that space however if you're looking at actually starting from scratch and you feel an, a need for um, permaculture skills curriculum development ways of developing up various modules and um, facilitating group processes finding out really great examples of how to do all that you might want to then think about doing some kind of permaculture teacher training program so the traditional way was it it's called a train the trainer program it, it sort of evolved out of um, just some of the basic skills that you need to become an effective uh, communicator and effective teacher. Um, I recently off started to offer this now as a permaculture teacher certificate online as part of the combined course so that they got the teacher certificate and the design certificate together woven um, as a complete whole and so that's now something that people who are focusing on becoming a permaculture teacher can actually take and spend a year developing up their skills. It's a very practical program, even though it's online. There's also opportunities to become a permaculture um, apprentice. Uh, so that would mean maybe going and doing traveling with people or going and, and um, living at certain places and doing internships and having someone who's your mentor, your permaculture mentor over a period of time. The permaculture diploma is another level of recognition for you as a permaculture practitioner that you can work towards after a period generally of about two years of practice in a particular area. It might be permaculture teaching or it might be permaculture designing. But if you're wanting to become a permaculture teacher, you would, you could or would want to work towards um, having a diploma of permaculture teaching. So there's a lot of information in different countries about how to work towards that. Um, we're also creating a pathway of that through the Permaculture Education Institute for our students and linking with 
the Guy University, which would mean that uh, through our program, you would then also be able to work towards a higher degree. So the teaching pathway um, continues beyond a design certificate, but that is always the best starting point. But let's not get overwhelmed with it. I totally um, encourage people to start small, start with a small workshop in a small um, group, take your time, develop up your skills, focus on what it is that you know and you love doing so that it's easy, it just flows. Um, there's a lot of different strategies that I can give you and we focus on in the educators course about how to develop up what you want to talk about, the structure, getting all your resources, making sure that you've, you've, you've got um, all the things that you need to deliver workshops and courses really effectively. Um, you could simply just work it into what, the, you're, what you're doing already. You know, maybe you're a teacher um, at a school and doing a permaculture course then gives you the, uh, the information to be able to weave it into your classroom activities. Um, I really encourage you, uh, if you're wanting to develop up your permaculture teaching skills, to connect locally with a whole lot of other different practitioners. So find a teaching team. Find a team who have different skills. Maybe there's someone who's passionate about soils or worms and someone's passionate about plants or healing. Someone's into the, the local community economic system. Together you have this really great team and you can draw on each other. And what happens if someone is organizing a workshop, they might invite you in to teach a particular session because they know that's your particular area. And similarly, when you organize something, if you've been worried about offering a particular topic because you're not really that skilled in that area, you know that you can call on these different people in your local area to deliver those particular things. So when you're getting started, those local connections are really important. And as you know, I think I want to encourage you more than anything, just to relax with it. You can never know everything. I'm, I know when I was first starting out, teaching a permaculture design course, the first ever permaculture design course, I was absolutely terrified because I thought, oh my gosh, what if someone asked me a question? I don't know the answer to it. Well, the thing is I realized over the time is that I would never be able to answer all the questions that everyone has about everything. I mean, that's absolutely impossible. It's ridiculous to think about that. Permaculture, as you know, is such a broad uh, field of knowledge. I can answer about the particular things that I know really well and I'm developing up skills to be and the connections to be able to go okay if we need to find out more about this this is where we go to find out that answer or this is the person that we need to ask and so always it's that interconnectedness that is so important um, so if you don't put yourself forward that you, you're kind of like the know-it-all and you can answer absolutely everything but you can answer what what you know and point people in the right direction and be okay with that then just relax. I think that is probably the biggest um, advice that I can give to you. Um, and also to be a really reflective teacher too. And I've mentioned this before that always look at, you know, what it is that when you were teaching, what worked well, what didn't work well, how you can evolve your style over, over time and develop up new skills um, you know maybe the stuff that you'll just completely drop you think well that really didn't work whatsoever I'm just going to let that be but I'm going to check out trying out this new new particular way of teaching and keep learning always be a learner as well as a teacher and so more than anything to just practice make sure you know what it is that you're teaching there's nothing worse than going to a workshop and someone develop you know in instructing you on something that they've actually not done they just read it in a book the night before and they're delivering it out and they really don't have any practical knowledge or experience and it's and it's when you have that practical experience that you can answer questions really authentically and you know you can only ever say well in my experience or from from the research that I've done or you know in this particular instance over here and so be really honest about where your knowledge and information is coming from and, and the things that you've tried and always to invite other people to share what they've known and what, what they know and what they um, have experienced. So I've talked before about, you know, some of the pathways and some of the ways that you can teach permaculture, but what about finding 
a mentor in permaculture because it's that being a continuous learner finding people that you can learn from over a long period of time you can't expect to just do a two-week permaculture course or a, an introduction course and think okay well I've, I've got it now I can head on out yes definitely head on out and and start to teach but continue to learn all the time so who do you approach one of the people that I've I've found to be an absolutely amazing mentor in understanding perm- permaculture far more deeply is an Aboriginal elder, um, Wurunga. And I think there is so, so much that we need to and we can learn from Indigenous elders about about land, about place, about plants, about culture, about local economic systems. And it's this deep sense of knowledge that can pro- provide an amazing foundation for permaculture understanding and make you a much much better teacher in in all the long courses that I run that or even short workshops with the kids as you can see I I invite as part of the team of teachers um, a local indigenous elder and I think that it's such an important part of thinking about how you create your permaculture team um, and acknowledging indigenous wisdom and acknowledging also elders in our community. And so it's also okay to reach out for advice. I recently had a call from this beautiful young lady, Felista, who is in Nairobi, and she invited me to come and and work with her in her local project that she's working on. She's currently working as an intern at a permaculture farm just outside of Nairobi, and she invited me to come and, and help her with that. So now we have this relationship where she sends me little messages on WhatsApp and little pictures of what's going on we, when we talk about design and um, how to develop it and different ways of doing things. So it's okay to reach out and ask for advice. I mean, that's actually what I've, I did in the early days and I still do now. I'm constantly looking for and seeking out inspiring people so who inspires you who would you like to talk to who would you like to mentor you vandana shiva has been an enormous inspiration for me as has um, helena norberg hodge and not neither of them are, are directly permaculture teachers themselves but they are vandana shiva um is passionate about seeds and and seed sovereignty and the complete food system and her understanding and knowledge is extraordinary as is the knowledge of Helena Norberg Hodge whose focus also is around the food system around community and and with a particular focus on economics and um, localization projects so I actually asked if I could be an intern with her many many decades ago in Ladakh and so I went and volunteered with her for for months and months so some of the ways to actually build your teaching experience um, well, actually there's so so many different ways that you can and, and I've talked about a lot of them already through this session that actually getting out and getting involved in local projects whether it be a community garden program a school garden program getting hands-on and offering to run a session on a particular thing, um, getting involved in helping other people running particular sessions, um, offering a community talk or even going on community radio, organising local permablitz programs in, in your neighbourhood. If you're wanting to get involved in a bigger course, I really suggest that you start off, if you want to, to be a course assistant if you can find in offer your help possibly as a volunteer to begin with and it's always um, a good way to start is to offer yourself as assist as an assistant so that gives you a chance to see how things run how things are working uh, what are the ideas that you can um, learn from that that you can take so the more different programs you go to you can actually find what really works for you as a teacher i'm not saying to go and copy what other people do but you each time you go you can learn and be inspired by that so you might want to actually um, start as an assistant and then maybe buddy up someone as an apprentice teacher and then form a teaching team recently in um, in uganda there was a young teaching team from you um, from uganda kenya liberia and 
they came together to teach a permaculture design course. It took a separate particular part and it was fantastic because as a team it worked really really well and I was there um, simply in the mentoring role so offering um, advice at the end of the day and asking them to reflect on what it is that they'd learnt in the day what it is that they'd um, what they were planning on doing the next day how they could improve on their sessions what how they could tweak it and being reflective learners the whole way through um, so I think forming a teaching team and maybe if you're a beginning teaching team inviting a mentor to to assist you in that way I think the the quicker that you can dive into the deep end and and um, really take on a class and build your confidence that way um, the quicker you'll build up really great teaching experience but I always I encourage you to learn from others to attend other classes to watch how other people teach and one of the things that I always do is to if I'm at a class I'll be I'll have half the page which is notes and information that I'm learning the other half of the page will be about the processes so it could be something they've done that I thought was really great and a really interesting way to do something or it could be an insight or a or a particular you know um, inspiration I had at that time thinking oh I could oh yeah I could teach this topic in this particular particular way and so not, rather than losing those ideas as they sort of flow through you, your mind before you've listened to the next topic and that idea is gone just to jot it down so jot down your processes and the content simultaneously um, I put in this picture of, of Sakina um, because I wanted to say how uh, quickly you can actually become a permaculture teacher she's a refugee she's a refugee from the Congo and for 10 years she's been living in a refugee camp in in northwestern Uganda so she was sponsored by the ethos foundation to come to this permaculture course and straight away as soon as she went back she was starting teaching other people because she is a community leader so actually supporting other local community leaders and and if you're a community leader yourself, finding ways to layer permaculture into what you're doing and, and working through your local network to ripple out um, permaculture, I think it's a really... And, and going and supporting those people. So um, people like Sakina would love to have people supporting and helping them in their communities um, to help spread out this knowledge about how to grow food sustainably, how to address water issues, housing issues, energy issues in refugee camps. Um, that would be absolutely fantastic, in particular um, creating micro-enterprise programs. So um, the news from from uh, the Permaculture Education Institute uh, will be at the Sustainable Living Festival in Melbourne, um, up on stage in the Dome at fed square on feb 10th at 4 30 where it'll be all about reclaiming the commons it's a fantastic lineup we have david holmgren um costa georgiatis who's abc gardening australia and um, permaculture practitioner and will there'll be dr nick rose who i mentioned earlier uh helena norberg hodge and myself and so i'm really excited to be taking the permaculture education institute to that platform and exploring uh permaculture at that venue so if you're in Melbourne on Feb 10th come along it's a free event and you um, I really look forward to seeing you there also um, and on another side of um, news part of what we were doing in Uganda and Kenya this year was meeting up with different communities linking with different programs uh, meeting with the people that we've been talking to online and this particular women's group in Kakamega in Western Kenya is where we'll be running a permaculture course um, this year, later this year. And I'm inviting people who are part of the permaculture education program who would like to be student teachers to come and volunteer um, to work beside me and beside the local teachers um, and help to run these programs and to help make it a, a real success. Um, please get in touch with me. So make sure if you're really wanting to join to become a permaculture teacher this year that you have a look at permacultureeducationinstitute.org. I've been downloading so much of the knowledge and the information and the strategies and the ideas and the links and the resources that I have been gathering as a permaculture educator for 25 years and putting it into this course. So some of the people have been saying, um, 
these are some of the comments that people have been saying. It's been a real privilege to learn from such a caring permaculture educator. You just feel like every bit of effort is given to the student's learning experience. There is great breadth of knowledge, experience and wisdom presented that helps the student actively engage in permaculture with ease. So thanks, Jesse, for that wonderful, um, wonderful, um, what do they call that? A testimonial, I guess. I, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by the feedback that we've been getting from this course. Um, Naomi wrote, permaculture and the topics introduced within this highly comprehensive course go a step beyond what I'd expected. I've learned and I'm learning much more than design. The missing link this course and new knowledge provides me is quite existential and very profound. So the missing link, permaculture, permaculture education, I think, you know, if you'd like to join up, this is really the time to do it. So in summary, to be a permaculture teacher, really it's about looking at a diversity of different types of ways of teaching in the world. And that could be locally and internationally. And as I said, right at the very start, a really great idea is to map out the different things that you feel or that you know of now and keep adding to that map as you evolve. So there's many pathways of being a teacher. There's many pathways of becoming a teacher. And I definitely, definitely encourage you to find a mentor or a, or a series of mentors or a cluster of mentors or even to create your own mastermind group that are helping each other. And most of all, just get out and do it. Don't wait until you become the expert because we're, we're always learning and always will be learning. So what you know now, what you feel comfortable about now, head on out and start to share that with others. And as you build your experience, you'll be building up your capacity as a permaculture teacher and the amount of programs that you're able to run and to create a livelihood out of this. And like I said at the start too, this has been my livelihood for the last 25 years and I absolutely love it. And I know that it is absolutely a possibility to create a real and sustainable livelihood out of permaculture teaching if you think broadly about how you can apply it. So thank you so much for attending today's masterclass. The next one will be at the end of February and I'm looking for some topic suggestions. I'll put some things, some suggestions up on the side as part of a, a poll. So if you can give me some feedback on that, that would be great. I would also love if you um, could give me some uh, feedback. I think there's a, when you click off, there's a little um, stars, how you, how you rate this masterclass. And I encourage you very much, if you are at all thinking about taking the permaculture course, the Permaculture Educators Program, which includes the online permaculture design certificate and the online permaculture teacher certificate, to have a look at this website, the permacultureeducationinstitute.org. It doesn't matter if you actually can't start now because this program is super flexible, which means that there are no deadlines. There are... Uh, you can work at your own pace um, modules will come out each week but you can take it at your own pace there's no expiry date on this material when you're ready to submit some materials I'll assess it when you have a question we'll add it into the question and answer session there and it this flexible program enables people from all different areas to be able to do it because it means that you're not you're not stuck to a certain program that may not fit around where your life is now and then you can start actually whenever you whenever you're ready and I'll be there um, to support you whenever you're ready so thanks again for attending um, this masterclass I hope you'll join me next time and I really do hope to see you um, in the Permaculture Education Institute and I look forward to supporting you um, to become a really fabulous permaculture teacher <music>